Hi, my name is Brandon Pomeroy, and this is a presentation on the feasibility of paper-based molds for metal casting. Now, in this presentation, we're going to look at a few things. We're going to look at what a paper-based mold actually is, why somebody would use it, how is a paper-based mold made, and how well do these types of molds actually work. Now, a paper-based mold is one in which the initial mold cavity is constructed out of cardstock or construction paper-like material. Plaster is then cast into this paper mold cavity, and the plaster hardens and becomes the actual mold for the uh, molten metal. Why would somebody use a paper-based mold over a traditional mold method, such as sand casting or ceramic shell? Well, traditional mold methods can be expensive, time-consuming, uh, and difficult to make. For example, in sand casting, you need to have a pattern um, that you're going to make a mold out of. These patterns are often made out of wood, which require the use of a machine shop to make, or they could be 3D printed, which needs a 3D printer, obviously. Um, some people might not have access to a 3D printer or a machine shop or a wood shop, and uh, paper-based molds can be cheaper, faster, and are available to everybody that uh, has access to a normal printer and a remote cardstock. Now, how is a paper-based mold actually made? Well, it all starts with a 3D model of the pattern that you want to cast on your computer. Um, a mold is created from that pattern using the Mold Wizard program uh, in SOLIDWORKS, for example, and that model of the mold is saved as an STL. The STL is loaded into a program called Pepicure Designer. Pepicure Designer takes your 3D model and unfolds it along the vertices to give you 2D rep a 2D representation of your model that could be printed, cut out, folded, and glued together to make a perfect copy of the 3D model you had on the screen not moments ago. Now, once the model is printed onto cardstock, the parts are cut out and folded, glued together, and totally assembled. Now, obviously, this is a very small box. Um, it was my test piece and it took mere hours to put uh, four of them together. If you had a larger, more complex piece, it could take up to a couple weeks, um, or it could be as little as 20 minutes. Um, so once you have your uh, paper mold, you pour plaster into the back of it um, to give it the rigidity and strength it needs to withstand the molten metal. Once dry, the molds are then baked to eliminate all moisture. Metal is then poured into the hot molds and your part is made. So how well does paper-based molding actually work? Well, to test this, I constructed four different mold boxes and um, tested different ways of pouring the plaster uh, and preparing the mold for the casting. Now, the first uh, way I prepared it was a simply poured uh, mold box, in which I took my paper uh, mold and I poured the plaster in and I just left it there to dry. Um, my second method was the poured and peeled box, in which, again, I just poured the plaster straight into the paper, left it to dry, but then once it was dry, I peeled off the paper on the mold, leaving just the plaster surface. Then I had the shelled and poured, in which I first shelled the paper mold uh, in plaster. To do this, I poured the plaster in um, and then immediately dumped it all back out. This left a very thin wall of plaster that eventually dried and acted as a shield against the rest of the plaster when I poured in my, uh, the, the full amount for the mold. Lastly, we have the shelled, poured, and peeled mold, in which I shelled the mold as before, pour the rest of the plaster in, and then peel away the paper, leaving only the plaster surface. Now, my results from this experiment, uh, the results of the poured mold box was um, a, an overall quality of pour. There was mold blowout on the corners and the walls, and uh, there were actually indentations in the final casting. It's hard to see in the uh, picture, but in, um, on the actual part, they are quite dramatic, and those indentations came from the tabs that were used to glue the pieces of paper together. 
together. Again, the overall quality of this was poor, and I would not recommend it. The results of the poor and PO were significantly better. There was still mold blowout, mostly in the corners, right there, and along some of the sides. But the surface quality of the part that came out was good. The overall quality of this method, I would say, is fair. The results of the shell and pour, we, uh, the shell did exactly what it was supposed to do. We had no mold blowout, not even in the corners. Um, but we did still have these indentations in the final casting. And for some reason, this casting had a particularly poor surface finish. Um, the overall quality of this, I would say, is poor. The results of the shell, pour, and peel was easily the best of the group. We had no mold blowouts anywhere along the mold. We had no indentations on the uh, actual part, and the uh, surface quality was very good. Uh, the overall quality of this is good. I did have some confounding factors in my experience. Uh, first off, the glue that I used to construct my paper molds was actually a water-based glue, so, uh, or water-soluble glue. So if a different glue, such as hot glue or super glue, was used, it might prevent some of the mold blocks. Although the, um, some of the blocks happened because the uh, paper was super saturated with plaster and it seeped through. So I do not know how well um, a different type of glue would actually happen. And the molds were not fired in the kiln, but were instead baked on top of the, um, on, on the lid of a hot furnace. Uh, this might have contributed to the strange texture that was on the parts, um, because uh, the molds uh, might not have been completely dry when we poured. In conclusion, paper-based molds are a very feasible option for um, people who want to do budget mold making. It is necessary to shell and peel your molds for the best results. But um, and one of the things that surprised me the most was that the molds could be reused if you uh, built them with the appropriate draft. Um, so overall, I would say that uh, paper-based molds is a great alternative to the backyard foundry man or foundry woman who wants to make molds but doesn't want to doesn't have access to a machine shop or a 3D printer. Um, or wants to make simple one-offs um, of complex parts. And that is my presentation on the feasibility of paper-based mold making molds in uh, metal casting. Thank you.